When it comes to grease, does brand really matter? Are all greases pretty much the same or do some actually produce better results than others? Today we're going to be doing some testing on a general purpose grease made by Supertech and compare it against Lucas Red and Tacky. Now about 3,000 years ago, the Egyptians were believed to be the first ones to use grease in their chariot wheels. Since the 1940s, lithium grease has been around. So has the grease technology really improved that much since the 1940s? And are all greases pretty much the same? Let's get the testing underway and see which of these two brands is the best. In the first test, we'll measure the tackiness of the grease. We'll also see which grease can handle the heat and which one will go up in smoke. We'll test the water resistance of both brands. We'll measure how well these brands perform in extremely cold temperatures. We'll also measure the film strength. We'll see which grease offers the best protection against corrosion. Costing less than $2 is this SuperTech Lithium General Purpose Grease. It claims to be a versatile grease designed for light duty applications requiring long grease life for light duty farm automotive industrial and construction equipment extremely stable and highly water resistant we're going to test that used on chassis fittings springs water pumps bearings and any general lubrication both brands we're testing are number two SuperTech advertises that the drop point is 350 degrees minimum. We're going to test that in a little bit and I'll explain more about the drop point when we do the testing. The SuperTech uses a mineral oil as its base and lithium soap as its thickener. Do not mix greases of different type. Use a solvent to remove and clean out all traces of incompatible greases before repacking. Repack according to manufacturer's instructions. When it comes to grease, the ability of grease to cling to moving parts is extremely critical. Lucas claims to be red and tacky. It's obviously red, but is it actually tackier than SuperTech? We're about to find out in the next test. I built the next test jig to quantify the cohesive and adhesive properties of grease. The tester will measure the amount of force required to separate the two metal discs that are held together by the grease. I'll first place approximately 25 milliliters of grease on the very center of the bottom disc. The top disc will then be lowered into position and then I'll apply just enough pressure to squeeze out all the air pockets and to form a layer of grease around the entire perimeter of the disc. Finally, I'll apply an upward force using a pulley and lever setup in an inline weight scale to measure the amount of force required to separate the plates. It took about 51.5 pounds of force to pull apart the two discs. After grease was removed, I used brake parts cleaner to clean off all grease residue. Costing twice as much as the SuperTech is this Lucas Red and Tacky Grease. It's a multi-purpose extreme pressure grease, fortified with anti-seize for maximum surface protection. It claims that its drop point is 540 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to test that. Just like SuperTech, this is NGLI number 2 grease. Excellent for trucks, cars, industrial equipment, farm equipment, boat trailers, and wheel bearings. Good temperature stability. We're going to test that. Good resistance to acid and alkali. We're gonna test that too. Good resistance to rust and corrosion. Good cold weather characteristics. NGLI rated for GCLB, the highest rating given for chassis and wheel bearing grease. Okay, about 87 pounds, much better than the SuperTech. That's an amazing difference between the two regarding tackiness. I'm not sure what the technical term is for these grease streamers. We've got one reaching from the very top all the way down to the bottom. This is some very cohesive and adhesive stuff. Very impressive by the Lucas brand. In the next test, we'll be comparing the film strength of SuperTech to Lucas using the Lubricity Tester. I'll begin by adding approximately 40 milliliters of grease into the test cup. I'll make sure that both the test bearing and the wheel have a thorough coat of grease on each surface before the test begins. Since grease is an extreme pressure lubricant, I've increased the amount of downward force applied to the bearing by 50%. The test will last right at two minutes. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scar on each bearing to see which product offers the best protection against wear.
Supertech is on the left and Lucas is on the right. I really did not think we'd see such a huge difference between the two brands. Now, in fairness, Supertech claims to be a light duty grease. Obviously, the wear scar is huge on this bearing compared to the Lucas, which has a very small wear scar, indicating that it has terrific film strength. Supertech grease indicated we should not mix greases unless we were sure they're compatible. So we're going to do a test. We're going to mix the Lucas with the Supertech and we'll see if any sort of reaction occurs. We'll check back on this in 24 hours. A very important role of grease is to prevent corrosion. In the next test, I'll apply a very aggressive rusting agent to three different wheel stud lugs. I've already removed the protective zinc coating from the bolts to make sure they're more susceptible to rust. We won't apply anything to the control bolt and I'll apply a very light coat of grease to the other two bolts. Finally, I'll apply a very powerful oxidizer several times and we'll see how much corrosion takes place in 24 hours. It's been less than a minute and our control bolt, which had nothing on it, is already starting to oxidize. The Supertech as well as the Lucas are still looking really good. Up next, we'll be measuring the cold temperature performance of each grease. The purpose of this test is to measure how grease inhibits the motion of bearings at temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius. The official test is called the Grease Load Temperature Torque Test. Since I don't have the official test equipment, I'll put together a test jig to compare the brands. Both sets of bearings have been chemically cleaned to ensure that all the original grease has been removed. I'll first pack each set of bearings with grease. Then both sets of bearings will be placed into a freezer that's set to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll come back in 24 hours to test the cold weather performance of each grease. The dropping point of grease is the temperature at which it passes from a semi-solid to a liquid. It determines the cohesiveness of the oil and the thickener of the grease. If a soap structure is formed properly, it can withstand very high temperatures. In fairness, Supertech advertises that the dropping point for their grease is only 350 degrees Fahrenheit, while Lucas says the dropping point for their grease is over 500. I'll be applying approximately 25 milliliters of each grease on the grease slide. The grease slide is made of metal and both sides are securely attached to a quarter inch piece of sheet metal to ensure equal conductivity of heat to each half during the test. I'll have the temperature probe touching the sheet metal during the test so we can keep an eye on the temperature. Grease that avoids turning into a liquid and then avoids going up in smoke will win this test. So let's turn up the burner to the maximum temperature and we'll see which grease can handle the heat the best and which one is going to go up in smoke. It's been right at 17 and a half minutes and the heat is beginning to get to the Supertech grease. Grease slide is at 335 degrees Fahrenheit and Supertech is showing signs of weakness and is beginning to sweat. A trail of grease is beginning to form and it's heading down the ramp. Okay, the super deck has reached dropping point. You can see that there's a steady stream of oil going all the way down this ramp. I'm gonna apply a little bit more heat to this oil slide by tilting up the burners and laying the burners directly onto the heating element. Supertech is really on the move now and this is not going to end well. Can Lucas hold on or is Supertech going to go up and smoke first? And Lucas is chilling out in the left lane, completely unfazed by all the heat and smoke. And the wind goes to Lucas. The water spray off test will let us know how well these greases withstand exposure to water. We'll test one grease at a time. We'll take a weight measurement of the test plate once we've applied a quarter inch layer of grease to it. The water in the tester will be right at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the test plate is in position, the test will begin when the water jet sprays water onto the test plate. The test will last right at one minute. After the test, I'll scrape away any grease that's extending beyond the edges of the test plate and then we'll weigh the test plate again. Additionally, we'll measure the size of the grease spread and compare performance. The Supertech grease actually did a fairly good job. You could see quite a big crater in the middle, but it did stay intact as far as on the metal plate. To scrape loose any sort of grease that's hanging over the edge as well as over the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll take a weight measurement. The size of the crater is a little over 51 millimeters. The test samples start off at 213.37 grams. It now weighs 211.8. That's a loss of 1.57 grams. I got the middle plate cleaned up, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply the Lucas and we'll begin the testing. Before testing the Lucas grease, hot water was added to the tank.
The Supertech was around 50 millimeters. Let's see what we have with the Lucas. Definitely a lot smaller crater size with the Lucas. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape off the excess Lucas and then we'll take a weight. Lucas started off at 213.65. It now weighs 212.6. That's a loss of 1.05. Supertech lost 1.57, so it's Lucas for the win. It's been right at 24 hours, so let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these wheel stud lugs to see how much corrosion has taken place. Wow, our control looks terrible. There's a lot of corrosion that has occurred in 24 hours. Let's take a look at Lucas first. Obviously, there's some corrosion, especially around the lower part of the wheel stud lug where the bolt was coming in contact with the liquid. Let's take out the Supertech and see how it compares. The amount of corrosion between Supertech and Lucas is very close. Both products did a very good job at preventing corrosion compared to the control. 24 hours ago, I mixed the Supertech as well as the Lucas together to see if these two greases would have some type of reaction, and fortunately, they did not. The bearings have been in the freezer right at 24 hours, so let's get the testing underway and compare the cold temperature performance of each brand. I'll first attach the test bearing on the front of the drill and then secure the drill in place on the tester. Once the bearing is in position, I'll place the weight scale hook through the eyelet on the bearing holder and then we'll begin the test. The amount of weight recorded by the weight scale will indicate how each brand of grease inhibits the rolling motion of bearings. And the Supertech quickly jumped up to 16 pounds and the maximum recorded weight for the Supertech was a little over 18 pounds. Up next, we'll test Lucas. And Lucas quickly jumped up to 9 pounds and peaked out at 10.7 pounds, but that's still a lot less than the 18 pounds with Supertech. So the Lucas demonstrated better cold temperature performance than the Supertech grease. If you've ever heard it said before, grease is grease, just use whatever. Well, that's a huge mistake in my opinion, and I've made that mistake. I've used some very cheap grease in some equipment that definitely deserves better quality grease than I've used in the past. So Supertech claims to be a light duty grease, and we saw why it's considered to be that today in our testing. In the future, I plan to test other brands of grease. I'm not sponsored by Lucas or any other brand. I've never accepted a single sponsorship. I buy all the products tested on this channel at viewer's request. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Just want to say thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to next time.